Let's talk about money. Since the beginning of my cycle trip, I tracked every single euro I spent so far. And in this video, I would like to give you a complete and holistic overview of all the expenses on the one hand and also like what uh, category, what kind of type, um, in which country uh, I spent how much for like groceries, for accommodation. And on the other hand, the, the income part. So first things first, as you can see, the scenery has changed from the last video. I'm now in uh, Vietnam in a small uh, town called uh, Sapa, like in the northern region to Vietnam, quite close to the Chinese border. And I'm staying here in the lovely homestay in the Homang region. The money question is a question which uh, arises quite often, as you can imagine, people always ask, like, how can you afford it? And um, I will give you a, a complete example uh, on the expenses. We have a realistic view and, of course, there are different, um, different extremes on the spectrum, but um, I will I will just give you the numbers um, I have and yeah, let's let's go right into it. want to show you um, how I'm able to, to track the expenses in quite a convenient way. And what you can see here is um, my, my Notion database. So Notion is um, like, a, like a sandbox thing where you can create different databases and also templates for uh, entering data. And here I have one for my budget. So it has like the expense um, where I can write what, what, uh, what it was about. Then the amount, the category I predefined, then we have a date. And here I have a date counter um, and that is automatically created, same as the country. And the date counter refers to the start of my cycling trip. So the 15th of April was day one. And then every time I create a new entry, it automatically refers to that um, day one and adds the date counter. And I can show you now how it works. So you can say here, for example, I had a coffee earlier. It costs 30,000 um, baht, uh, don, Vietnamese dong, and uh, conversion to euros and 26. And I um, was eating outside and with the date. And that's it. So I have a new entry created. And yeah, I can also show you here how I do it with the phone. Um, super easy, super simple. I can do it while I'm not connected to the internet. Later on, it will synchronize. And it's all for free. So that's uh, the good part about it. I use it for different things. Um, for example, also for video planning or for daily journal, journal journaling. And for me, it's super, super useful to keep an, keep an overview. And I have here, yes, you can see um, there are nine, 928 entries. So I really, really do it for everything I spend, even if it's like 20 cents or 30 cents, just just so so I know it's more for, for me for I like data so it's uh, it's it's for that okay so that's where I got the data from and here you can export it and then I exported all the data because unfortunately you cannot really analyze with the notion itself but I exported it and I made some graphs so we can now go into them start with the overview of the countries as you can see here so I sorted it by amount of dates and uh, we go from top to bottom so like a few days i had in yeah, medium cost countries you could say like in hungary slovenia bosnia france um yeah we see macedonia armenia georgia and like also quite a few days in high cost countries like here in germany i was 19 days in uh, croatia 21 days and in austria 24 days um and then a big portion uh in Turkey because it's yeah, just really really big so the most days I spent so far in one country was in Turkey and um, yeah I think that's important to to have that graph at first to just get an understanding how many days I spent in what country because of course it affects then the cost per country so we go to the next one and that is all the the, the nights I slept uh, in these seven months so you can see I was invited three times um, and I was sleeping at friends' places in uh, 32. And like I separated, invited if I didn't know the people before. And uh, obviously the friends also invited me, but I knew them. So it's a category friends. So it's, it's quite a lot, actually. Um, so thank, <laughs> thank you for everyone who invited me and also where I could stay uh, long days and for the food and for the hospitality. So that definitely helped me, um, especially in the beginning to, to, to get started. And it was also for me to go like from friend's place to friend's place instead of, yeah, I go to this city and, and this city. And that was really nice, uh, especially in the beginning. So the next one is like a hotel hostel. 
and obviously wild camping. So the biggest one is wild camping for me. And then I have the, the other ones. Here you can see the, the days per country and um, the type of sleeping. It changed per country. So for example, in Austria, I had very less of wild camping um, and unfortunately quite expensive paid camping. But uh, that was due to the fact that, for example, in Tyrol, in the mountainous area, there's not a lot of flat space, so it's hard to wild camp. And they find you in Austria quite a lot. So I didn't uh, do wild camping there that much. And um, yeah, you can also see in like Georgia, Armenia, Macedonia, what I mentioned earlier with the hotel hostel, uh, when it got cheaper, I got more into that and had less um, like friends. So also for any distracting noises here, but I'm in nature and uh, chicken want to have some attention. So in the next slide, uh, I will show you the complete overview of all expenses. And uh, I want just to ask you, like, please write in the comments, what do you think from 15th of April to 15th of November? How much did I spend in total? So let's continue. So yeah, that's the complete overview of every single euro from 15th of April to 15th of November. And um, I asked you some time ago on, on Instagram, what do you think, like from the categories? And it was pretty good, but uh, transport, even though that includes now the flight from uh, Yerevan to Hanoi, which was obviously quite uh, costly, um, also with the additional, um, additional weight I had to buy for my luggage. But groceries and eating outside um, were the biggest, biggest expenses for me, which was kind of also pretty much what I, what I expected at first. And um, we have some miscellaneous costs. What is behind it, I will, I will show you later on. We have transport that includes basically everything, like when I took a bus, when I'm somewhere, I take a tram, bus, um, also not a flight. But usually, like without the flight, it would be like a really small, um, small category. But with with the flight, it's it's quite big. Then we have fixed costs, so it's everything like health insurance, um, like the domain for my website, the website itself. I have some licensed music for the YouTube videos, um, and everything else which which comes to that. Then we have uh, activities. So when I went like to to museums, when I went to um, anything which can be considered as activity. And actually, I was kind of surprised that it was rather low because I did quite a lot of activities, but I also I also tried to find a balance between being cheap and have a good value um, in regard to the activity. But still, I think like for seven months, it's, it's not that much. Uh, then medicine, so yeah, different kind of medicine. Like it's quite big because it includes the 100, 30 euros I spent in Croatia for the hospital and the, the ride, so it's not like all medication, but it, I included it in here. And unfortunately, like from time to time, I had some health issues where, where I get, got some medicine. Um, yeah, hygiene articles. Yeah, I think it's pretty self explanatory what is behind that. And then we have the postcards. So, um, still quite a lot. Like, I wrote a lot of postcards and I still write a lot of postcards. Um, what I, what I realized now, like on average, you can say the stamp is between one and one euro fifty usually and the card around one euro. So one postcard is around two euro fifty, two to two euro fifty. So yeah, um, that's a complete overview. And uh, yeah, I, I did that first and was like, okay, now I kind of want to dig a little bit deeper to, to understand what I included here as well is um, how often I, I put an entry in, into the database. So for example, for groceries in total, it was 1,580 euros. Um, the, and that is um, split up in 235 individual um, entries. And you can also see here, like for example, for fixed costs, obviously it's just seven because it was seven months and for transport 39. And here you can also, like, if you deduct the flight, which was about 800 euros, uh, it's like 200 euros left and then 38 additional um, entries. So it's like really small, usually, except the flight. I also 
checked like what I spent um, per month and you can see it's around 1,000 1, uh, euro. For me it was kind of interesting to see like I expected before that I would spend less the warmer it gets because I will do more wild camping. Um, but somehow like when that was the case and even when the country was cheaper I was like uh, enjoying more the, the possibilities to go go enjoy some good food or go outside and eating and that's why it kind of still balances each out but yeah August and September are are uh, lower than, than before and here um, it's also quite interesting you can you can see now how it developed over the months like for what um, categories I spent how much for example in groceries like when I was in the high cost countries and like uh, uh, Germany, France, and especially Austria. Austria was super expensive in, in uh, groceries. I think it was the most expensive, like even close to Switzerland. But luckily, I I never bought uh, groceries in, in Switzerland. I always stayed at friends' places. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely got down like in August and September, you can see. And, and that does not mean that I bought less groceries. They were just way, way cheaper. But on the same hand, um, eating outside also got cheaper even though I ate more uh, outside and you can also see like the campground um, May, June, July was more and then when it got more into the summer the hotter it got the less I went to campgrounds but on the other hand the more east I went there were less campgrounds anyway so and then later on um, the hotel hostel category like in the cheaper countries in Macedonia Georgia, Armenia, where I paid like five euro for hostel um, bed, they got more. Okay, so um, miscellaneous cost. Um, here it's not really, yeah, visible and um, what is behind the cost. So I created a second graph, and here are all entries excluded, which have a value below ten euro. So you can get an idea what is behind. And for example, here it's a um, gas can for cooking. Um, a dead cat is not a dead cat, but it's actually for um, for microphone. It's like a microphone cover to reduce like the uh, or to improve the quality of the the, the voice input. And uh, yeah, for example, here a drone donation. When I was in uh, Montenegro and almost lost my drone, like I got a, a text message, someone found my drone, and I had to go back and I gave them some money because they they didn't have to do it but they, they, they got in contact with me and uh, that was for example this miscellaneous I also include the internet um, I didn't put it in fixed cost because of course the change of internet always is different country per country uh, also I got an additional microphone I bought an additional external hard drive to, to store my videos um, yeah, here bicycle overhauling in Istanbul, where I like, got new tires, where I got a complete check of the bicycle, changed um, oil and a lot of other stuff. Uh, here, visa for Iran. Um, I had to buy a new power bank because my other one broke. Um, yeah, like there's also a lot of things included for like the filming and like I think most, most costs, like the microphone, additional hard drive. Uh, power bank, um, here's a microphone adapter, here's something for the microphone. So a lot of cost um, um, in combination with um, all the filming and, and the YouTube uh, stuff. So here we see the, the expenses for groceries per country and the amount of uh, entries in database. And that is kind of what I want to say before, like um, you could see like I was in Austria for like 20, 24 days. Um, and the cost was 285 split up in 21 entries and on compared to that Turkey is another extreme example there were 64 entries and it was a total of 213 so uh, definitely way way less than than in Austria uh, here you can see like the 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 campgrounds similar thing um, high cost countries like in Austria and Croatia um, and then further down we have the the cheaper countries which then brings us to this picture. So uh, here you can see the average price for the campground in uh, country. Um, to be fair, in Switzerland, it was a special situation. Like it was a campground, but that day it had like 
10 degrees and I was completely soaked, everything was wet. So I arrived at the campsite and also was raining the complete night. And then I uh, treated myself with one of these uh, wooden uh, wooden cabins. So it was uh, a actual a cabin one time. That is why it's on 37 euros. So you can but really see the further east I go, the, f the, the lower the cost. So yeah, that was the um, complete overview of all expenses. And I have to admit, it is, it is more than, than I thought I would spend. Um, I didn't really say like I have a complete fixed budget before, so I wanted to see first what kind of categories are there, how much um, do I spend, and then I could always like uh, readjust, which I did. But as always, there are some costs which are not included at first in your expectations, like the 90 euros for the, the hospital and uh, ambulance, like it was in 130. Or when I took the train in, in Austria also where I had like pain in the upper thigh muscle. And uh, when things break and you have to replace them, you never know when it happens. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the, for me the, the real um, picture from, from my personal um, experience. And even though, yeah, if, as I said, uh, it was a little bit more than, than I thought, it's still completely fine for me. I mean, it's um, money spent for experiences i think is, is money really well spent anyway and um, if we look again in like the, the the chart of the overall expenses you can see that um the, the the highest amount of money went to people the local people like i went to small shops for eating i went to small shops for buying groceries um i i i'm fine with where the money went so that's uh, what i wanted to say um, to give you a little bit an uh, another number from other cyclists, so I'm in several um, bicycle um, WhatsApp groups and there was a recent survey and like 100 people participated and the, the mean value per month was around 700 euros. Um, but I think if people don't really track everything, they often underestimate or they don't include costs which I think should be included like Spotify uh, subscription, so like every everything you spend, like some things you spend over the year, but you have the cost anyway. So um, I think some people don't don't take a, a really everything into the calculation. And uh, on the other hand, that is now something for later on where I want to where I want to see how I could reduce the cost if I decide to really do so. Um, if you travel together, for example, you can split more costs. You can, you can uh, cook cheaper, you can stay in places cheaper. And uh, a lot of people which, which participated in the, um, in the survey were, for example, traveling uh, together. So that was the um, expenses side. And now I want to come to the income part. I got uh, 558 euros um, from donations so far. Yeah, thank you very much for every single one of them. Uh, like most of them, I would say like 70, 80% of that was from fr friends and families for my birthday. But there were also some uh, additional ones from, um, from yeah, just friends, uh, former colleagues and uh, other people who, who felt uh, to, to give me a donation. So yeah, thank you very much um, for, for all of them. Um, then I had uh, 925 euros of self-employed work I did uh, in that time. I had um, 20 euros from um, a website uh, as payback um, points for like some insurances I did uh, some time before, but I included it uh, in the income. Then uh, I come to, to YouTube. Uh, here it's quite uh, short, uh, zero. Um, I can show you here like the, the requirements for, for getting anything because like even if you get uh, advertisements on any videos, um, there's no no money yet uh, being being paid because they, they changed it a few years ago, I think. So you need to have like 100, um, uh, 1000 subscribers and like 4000 watch hours uh, in one year. To be completely honest with you, I thought it would be, um, be easier to, to reach that. Um, but it's not easy. That brings us to a total income of 1,503 euros. And if I subtract that from the expenses, it will result in a minus of 940 euros per month.
Now we have a comprehensive view on both aspects, the income and the expenses. And in the last chapter, I want to derive some actions and possible strategies to improve the situation on both of them. If we look again at the expenses and think a bit where I could save in the future, so definitely I will not eat less because it's super important to have enough uh, nutrition to be able to perform in the end. Still, in the part of groceries, there's a huge level for uh, savings if you travel with other people. I um, really could feel that when I was traveling uh, at the time with um, Amadeo and uh, Jan, greetings to you guys. So when we were uh, traveling together, we could cook differently we, and the food was even better. Maybe also because uh, I didn't do the cooking, <laughs> um, but it's a different story. So that would be an option. Also eating outside. Yeah, I mean, if you travel with other people and cook less, then I think you also automatically eat less outside. Um, so that would be uh, another point. For the miscellaneous costs, I had some things which I improved. For example, I changed from gas to um, petrol for the stove. And you can save quite a lot of money. Like the gas is really convenient. Um, it's, it's clean, it's easy to use, um, but it's definitely more expensive. I would say by the factor 10 at least. Transport, in my particular case, like that big amount, if you, if you, you can put it um, back to two cost factors. So the one was the train uh, in Austria. Um, I don't really see anything there because uh, for me that was there the, the right option to do and similar now with the flight um, for me personally was what I felt was the best decision so I don't really want to think about saving because that's um, for me a justified expense. Fixed costs I also optimized uh, a little bit so I went through my individual items there and for example cancelled one a subscription I didn't really use that much. And also for my health insurance, it's unfortunately was kind of more expensive because I chose the one which also covered um, US and Canada. And that basically doubled the cost because at the beginning I wasn't sure how I want to, to proceed, where I want to go. As of now, I'm quite certain that I will not go to the US and Canada. So I'm currently in contact with them to try to change to the cheaper plan, but I'm not really that responsive. Other than that, I reduced the, the price for hosting my website. So the further down we go on the list, um, the less impact of the individual category on the overall expenses. If I look at it, there's nothing really which comes to my mind what I can and what I kind of what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so back it's back to personal preference, and for me that's all fine. Um, maybe even the opposite for activities to spend more. But I'm I, I mean I did still a lot of things. But for example, here a museum in uh, Vietnam is so cheap; they cost like one euro fifty, two euro. In Istanbul, I kind of restricted myself because it was really expensive. So for one thing, it was like 15 to 20 euros. If you look at the review and what you get, I didn't really justify myself to, to, to pay that much. So I just went to the things which were for free and they, you can still do a lot of things. Because obviously it's a different kind of traveling. If I would be on two weeks vacation, I don't care there at all. Um, if I feel like uh, it's worth to spend it, then I will do it. But here I think, of course, different. Regarding the income, I will focus on the categories work and uh, YouTube. And regarding work, I already have planned to work in Australia for at least two to three months. And for that, I also have my working visa now. And I plan to be there in uh, March, April for um, working. And if you talk about YouTube, plan is to continue with um, making videos with uh, high quality. And I reflected a little bit on, on the former videos. I, I realized for myself, I'm not that kind of guy who is immediately when, when I'm experiencing something to grab the camera and record it. Um, as you can see, like most of the videos, I, I experienced something, I filmed it, and later on I, I talked about it. And that is more fitting to, to my character. What is kind of missing by that is like the personal connection to the experience. Um, and that kind of translates to the videos as well, what I could observe. But uh, I mean, it's, it's, of course, I enjoy um, if people enjoy watching. But on the other hand, it was always for me like a good thing to, to reflect on while doing the videos on what has happened in like the previous weeks. So in the beginning, I did a video every week for um, a few months. And now I have the videos, now I have the memory and I can watch them. And 
of course that is uh, something which I value uh, highly but uh, still it's nice if other people and like more people also appreciate so I'm not gonna lie on that um, so that is uh, kind of the idea for the future that's the the end of the um, budget video I hope you found it interesting uh, I for sure did um, was really interesting to to for me personally to find out uh, where where I spent money and to to dig a little bit deeper and also to to check how I could uh, improve but I mean as I said uh, in the beginning already for me every euro is worth spent and of, of course you can do it um, way cheaper you can of course pay spend way more it's a highly personal thing uh, I know a lot of other cyclists who spend um, way less but they have a different uh, different style and everyone has a different style and a different uh, unique way of uh, doing what they do and um, that's that's completely fine so yeah um, if you have any like questions remarks um, Anything else which comes to your mind, let me know in the comments below. And um, yeah, I say goodbye to you now from my uh, editing <laughs> voiceover spot because I always have to find a good spot for the, the voiceover. So um, now I, I found one here and uh, see you in the next one. Bye bye.